Welcome back to our Richard's YouTube channel. In today's class, we learn how to make this beautiful straight pant with this seamless design. So you can see that there is no seam on the crotch area. I will be teaching us how we can do this and then draft this beautiful pattern. It's a very simple tutorial and it is beginner friendly. So this is what the side is looking like, as you can see. And this is what we have on the back. You can see that our crotch is well drafted and it fits perfectly. If this is something you would like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so to make these straight pants, I have my patterns root like this. And the measurements I'll be working with, the waist measurements that I'm working with is 27 inches. The waist to crotch is 11 inches. And then the tie measurement that I'm working with is 25 and a half. That's 25.5 inches. So these three measurements are important for a straight pants because it's not going to be fitted. But I've been having several requests on how to draft a pencil trouser. So I'm just going to just show us how you can do this using this pattern also. Although we are not focusing on that, I'm just going to explain in bit how you can go about that. So for that, you'll be needing your waist to knee measurement and also your waist to floor, which is your ankle or whatever you want your trouser to be. So for this, the waist to floor I'm working with is 45 inches. I also need this for this palazzo also. And then you need the circumference of your knee. So now you've been using your knee circumference also. The knee circumference that I'm working with for this is 18 inches. And then you need the circumference of this measurement, which is your ankle area also. So now let's get right into the tutorial. So now I already marked my points. This here is my starting point. What we have here, I hope you can see this, okay? So this is my starting point here, which is going to double as my waistline. And then from there, I already measured my crotch measurement, which is 11 inches. And then from there, I'll measure my floor measurements for this pattern. So let's just take this step by step. So. The first measurement I'll be needing is my waist circumference measurement, which is 27 inches. So I'll be dividing that 27 inches by 4, and that's going to give me 6.75. So the line that you are seeing here is just 1 inch allowance that I drafted. So this 1 inch, you just need to mark 1 inch from your side, and then make it into a straight line as your allowance, which we'll be using later. So now, from this, I'll be taking this waist measurement from where this allowance stop, not here. So I'll be taking my 6.75 measurement from here. So I'm just going to place my tape like this now and then I'll measure the 6.75. So after measuring the 6.75 now, I'll be adding a depth allowance of 1 inch and then another allowance which is my same allowance of 1 inch. Okay? If you saw by plenty allowance, you may add one and half it, but 1 inch is fine and that is the only allowance I'll be adding to this. Okay, so now in all I have around 8.75 for my waist, including the 2 inches allowance that I had it. So this measurement that I have here, I'm just going to take it down to my crotch measurement. And then I'll measure the 8.75 here, so that I can cut my crotch line. So the 8.75 is measured, and then I'm going to make it into a straight line. Okay. So this is what I have. So now to get my crotch curve, I need this time measurement that I have, which is 25 and a half. I'll add two inches to it for ease. That's going to give me 27 and a half. And then you know from the tie area, the pants become separated. We have each of the uh, each of the legs separated. They are no longer joined together like what we have in the waist. So in this case, this measurement is going to be divided by two, not four. Because it's not joined together, it's separated. We have one leg separate and the other leg separate. So now this 27 and a half, dividing this by two is going to give me 13.75. So in this case now, this 13.75 is going to be taken from here. So let me just extend this one inch. That's why we have that one inch. So that we can shape our waist. So now I'm going to take my 13.75 measurement from here now. And then I'm going to stop it here. So I'll extend my 
crotch line to that place. So after getting that, for my crotch curve on this intersection, this angle that is intersects, I'm going to get the midpoint of that angle. Okay, so using my ruler, I'm just going to get a V here, which will assist you in getting that. So I'm just getting it then from there. I'm going to mark that point. So now extending this now, I'm going to measure what I have from here. From where my the waist measurement that I took down, from here to where my crotch line measurement stops. I'll measure what I have. So I have four inches. And what I have there, I'm going to divide it by four. And four divided by four is going to give me one. So whatever it is that you have there, you mark it on this diagonal line just to assist you in drawing your cross so that your crotch curve is not going to be too long. So avoid packing around that area. So once I have that now, I'm going to be connecting it from the waist point here all the way to this crotch and then back to where my crotch curve stops. So using my curl driller, I'm going to connect from that line there like this. And then from there, I'm going to take this curve also and then connect it to that point in a way that is not going to be packing. Okay. So we cannot take it at all. We can do this in bits. And then if you have any sharp edges, you can just throw it in the town. So this is me just trying to find a very good curve. I can't find my front curve. I don't know. I'm just managing this. Okay. Okay, so I think this is giving me something better. So I'm just going to with what I have there. So I have my curve like this. So you should please get a good curve. So after having that like that, the next thing now is to take my dart. Remember I had the dart allowance. So to do this, I'm going to be using my nipple to nipple point, which is 8 inches divided by 4. Divided by 2 is going to give me 4 inches. And remember this is the center foot. This is the center of the shoulder. So that measurement is going to be taken from the center, not from the side. So from here now, I'm going to be taking the 4 inches measurement, which is here, and then I'll make it into a straight line. So my dart leg is going to be around 5 inches. So I'll mark 5 inches now, and then connect that. So on both sides now, I'll take half, half inch. Remember, I just left 1 inch with the dart. So half, half inch on both sides to give me the 1 inch, and then I'm going to connect it to this. So it's not compulsory you had a dart to this. You can just shape your dart up but it's better to just have it on your pattern just in case so now after doing that here yeah, now to connect my remember i took my waist measurement from here not from this allowance area so to connect from my from this point all the way to my to my crotch area that's me shaping the trust i'm just going to get a smooth curve now and then connect it from that point to my crotch so now my trouser is no longer straight, it's now, it's now curved, sorry. My trouser is no longer straight now, it's now curved and shaped. So you can see what we have there. So now I'm true with this upper part. So now for this straight part that I'm doing, the next thing is just for me to take it down straight like this. So from this point now, I'll just take it down straight to my floor length, which is the M line, which is 45 inches. But because I said I want to just explain to us how we are going to go about it if we are doing a, a fitted pant trouser. So now the next thing is for you to take your waist to knee measurements. And then the waist to knee measurements I'm working with is 22 inches. So 22 inches is around here. And then I'm going to roll it. So like I said, for this pants that I'm doing, I don't need this. I just want to use this opportunity to teach us. So here now I want to get my crease line. Crease line is also what they call the gator line. That line you see when they fold trousers and tie on it, that line that just comes straight down like that. That's the line I want to form now. So to get this line now, I'll measure what I have here, which is 13.75, and then I'm going to divide it into two. Okay, which is this. So that measurement that I have there, I'm going to take it down. And that's going to serve as my gator line. So I'll take that measurement here. This paper is not long enough for my 45 inches, so I'm just going to stop it here and then I'll assume that to be my floor length. 
to that measurement again, I'm going to repeat it here. Then I'll make it into a straight line to form my gator line. So you need this if you are doing a fitted pant. Okay, if you are doing a straight or palazzo pant that like I'm doing, you don't actually need this. So after doing this now, on your knee measurement here, you are going to take your round knee measurement, which is 18 inches. And that 18 inches, remember, it's two separate legs, so we're going to be dividing that by two. And that's going to give me 9 inches, which is here. So that 9 inches also, I'm going to further divide it by two. And I will share it between them. So that's four and a half. So the four and a half, instead of taking my 9 inches from this corner here, I'm not going to take it, okay? So from this corner here, I'm not going to take it from this corner. I'll divide the 9 inches from my gator line. That's why you need your gator line. So from this gator line, now I'll share that one 9 inches. So I'll have one here, yeah, four and a half here, and the other four and a half is going to be here. Likewise, on your floor measurement, whatever it is that you're using on your floor. So let's say my, my round ankle, that measurement to take on your ankle area. So let's say that measurement is around maybe 16 inches. So 16 inches divided by 2 is going to give me 8. So that 8, I'm going to share it into 2. So I'll just place 4 on my gator line and then I'll measure 8 here and then 4 here. So that's 4 here, 4 here. So now the next thing is to connect it. So to connect this, you're going to connect from your floor to your knee like this on both sides. Okay. So after connecting like this, the next thing is to connect from here to your crotch. So now to do this, you need to get your pant cuff. So from there now, you're going to place that cuff from this crotch area now. And then you can see it's, it's a leg cuff, so it will just take it together once for you. So from there now, you give it a very good cuff like this. See what I have there. And then here also, you're going to be connecting from this external part all the way to this part. So you make sure that you don't have anything sharp and then you make sure you take this measurement correctly on your client. I'm just taking this tentative measurement because I did not actually measure this because I don't need this. I'm just using a arbitrary measurement. So from there now, you connect this also and then whatever sharpness that you want to have there, you make sure that you true it because you cannot leave anywhere sharp. So if you are doing a pant cup, a fitted pant cup. This is how you draft your pattern for a fitted pant cup. I hope you can see this. So this is how you draft the pattern. But in this case, you are just working with a palazzo. So now I'm just going to take what I have there, like I explained. I'll take this 13 and half that I, 13.75. I'm just going to trace it straight down to form my palazzo trouser. So here now on the floor length from this Allowance area, I measure 13.75 and then I'll connect it like that to form a straight line. I hope we are not confused with the 30 lines that we have. So I'm just going to use maybe a black marker to note this our new line. So this is the actual line that we are working with which is for our straight pant that is not fitted. Okay, so which means this part is just going to be fitted up to the crotch area where we took our actual measurement. But here you can see the true knee measurement. I did not use it. I just went straight like this. So we have all these allowances for ease and to make this just a straight pant. You can see it's just straight down. We did not do any shaping. So now we are done with this now. I'm just going to cut out the front pattern and then use this to cut the back also. So as you can see, I've cut this out and I just cut my straight pant, not this fitted pant pattern that I had there. So now I'm going to put this aside now and bring a fresh paper to cut my back. So the back is similar to the front. We are just going to be doing very little modification here. And note that the slanting that I did here, I also cut it out for this straight pant because this place we want it to be fitted. Okay. Okay, so I've got in a new pattern now and I placed my front block on it. So like I said, I just doing a few modification from the front. But before I place this, I left one inch allowance, you can see here, on the upper part here for my bum right. Remember there is a bum at the back, it's not as flat as what we have in front. So the first adjustment that I'm going to be doing here is to extend this my crotch line. 
So this crotch line that I have here, to accommodate the bum, I'm going to be extending this by two and a half inches, which is the standard. But if the person is quite on the big side, you can make this three inches instead of two and a half inches. So here, I'm going to be connecting that two and a half inches like this. And then also here, the curve that I used to create my crotch, I'm going to extend it also. So from where the front crotch stops, I'm going to measure one and a half inches there. Okay. So now I'll, I'll extend that to one and a half inches. And then on the upper part here, I'll extend it by one inch for my palm rest to accommodate the palm. So I have that there. So the next one is for me to connect from here all the way to this place and this place. Note that I'm not adding extra allowance because I don't like too much allowance on pants. And the one inch allowance that I added on my waistline, I think is fine. But if you wish to add extra allowance, then you may add it. So from there now, I'm going to be connecting from my waist now, from my new waist here, up to this crotch, and then to my new crotch length. So again, you should get a good curve. I don't know where my curve is, so I'm just going to manage what I have here. I think this is better. So from there now, I'm going to be connecting all the way to this now. And then from there also, I'll connect it to the upper part, like this. Okay, so I have that for my back now. So the next thing is for me to, so here if you are doing, remember this is a fitted, it's not a fitted trouser. And I have enough allowance here already. Imagine this is supposed to be my actual line. You have to be doing a fitted trouser. I just took it straight and you can see that all this, and all that I have on this side also, they are all allowances. See what the excess that I did from inside. So there is enough allowance on this palazzo already. I don't want it too big. But if you are supposed, if you are to be transferring this front to the back of a fitted truss, I remember it is fitted. So if we want to add maybe one or two inches allowance on the knee and also on the floor so that it will not be too tight. But for me, I'm not having any allowance. So from here now, I'm just going to connect this. I'll just find a good place to just connect this to back to my actual measurement. I'm not actually adding any extra extra there. So I have that now and then I'm done. So now the last thing to do now is on my waistline. Remember, we're going. this is the side of the trouser. So we are still going to be joining it together by the side. So this cannot be longer than this so that they can match. So to do this now, from this my bum rise that I have here, I'm just going to connect it back to this my front waist on the side, so that they can match each other and I'll be able to join them together. And also for my front waist here, on my center front here, I just like to go down by maybe one inch or 1.75 inches, because I like the fitting that it gives my trouser, it's actually not compulsory. So I'll just go down there by 0.75 and then the same way I'll connect it back to this side so that they can all match. So you can see the modification that I did there. And then I'm going to cut this excess off from the front. I don't need it. And then the dust that you have in front now, you're going to be transferring it back to your back. And like I said, this dust is not important and I'm not sure I'm going to be using the dust for this trouser pattern also, so I just remove it from the side if I don't want to. So now the next thing is to cut out this trouser pattern. So we just cut out exactly what we have now on our pattern. So you can see, I'm just cutting what we mentioned earlier. We now cut around my new crotch for the back. And then the side cutting remains the same. If you notice, I only did this adjustment to the center part. The side remains the same. So the cutting we are just going to be doing on the side. And also this slope that I have here, I'll cut it off. And then the shaping that we did for the front also on the side, I'm just cutting it using the front pattern that I have on it already as a guide. So now I'm done cutting this now. 
I'm just going to be cutting this now on my main fabric. Okay, so I've cut this now on my fabric. So I have to cut it on the fabric first because I will modify this pattern. Okay, so I'm going to modify this pattern to form this. Okay, so we have this design on the front of the trouser. You can see the design that we have there. And then if you zoom in, you will notice that there is no seam line here. Okay, so this place is not sewn. So this design now is what we want to create using this pattern. And to create this, the first thing I need to note is where this black part stops. And on the pattern, it stops around here. Okay, so now that's what I'm going to be measuring now. So on my pattern, I'm going to just rule a straight line from that point. So now from this point now, I'll just measure from my crotch. I'll measure like maybe one inch or one and a half inches because I don't want this design to enter into where that crop is a lot. So here now, I'm just going to measure one and a half inches upward from my crotch and then I'm going to make that into a straight line. So after doing that, I'm going to retrace this part just this upper part on another pattern or if you want you can just maintain this crotch measurement that you have here so now i'm going to be tracing this on a fresh paper now and then we'll continue our drafting so i have this pattern here i'm just going to place this on it and then using my tracing wheel i'll trace out what i have there and then cut it out Okay, so this has been traced now, and then if you place on it on it, you see that I have traced exactly what I have there. So now the next adjustment I want to make is on this actual design, I don't want that on it. So this one inch that, that I added here, I'm going to be removing it. So what I'll do is on this side here, I'll measure one inch, that one inch now, and then I'll connect it. So this is me removing the one inch that that I had it because I don't want any seam line on that front part okay so now I've removed that now and then I'm going to be cutting it up on both patterns so I've placed it on it now I can actually see through what I've marked and I'll go in with my scissors and then I'll cut this off So now there's no dirt on this any longer. So all this modification was why I first cut it on my fabric before I did this pattern. So now the next thing is to fold this in by the allowance that I'm going to use to sew. So I sew by very little allowance. I had 0.25. So now I'm going to be folding this by 0.25 and then I'll imitate it as if I've sewn this. So you can see the way I'm folding it, I'll just hold it with the tape now. And then after folding it, I'll open it up like this. So now I've joined it together. You can see that I've held it to the paper just as if I'm sewing this. So after this, now to form this design, you can see what we have here. So on my waistline, on that side, I'll be going down by 5 inches or let's say 5 or 6 inches here for the first black pattern here. Just so I, it can guide me on what to do. So now, okay, so let me just go there by five and a half inches. So we have 5.5 inches. And then for the width of this black strip, I'll be doing two and a half inches. So from that point, I'll measure another two and a half inches, which is here. So from there now, I'm going to be making a curve through my crotch, like what I have here. You can follow this or you can do a design that you want. So now from that, I'm going to take my curved ruler and then I'll find a very smooth curve there. So from here now, I'm going to curve it like this. And then from there now, I'll curve it back to my trouser pattern. So here now. So you can actually adjust this as you want. So I don't want this too deep. I'm just going to curve it from that point like this. All the way to this place, and then I'm going to take it straight down like this. 
So this is the shape that I'm going for. You can go for any shape of your choice. So from then now, I'm just going to take this straight down. Because this is what I want, excuse me. Okay, so I have something like this and then it's going to go over like that. So once I'm satisfied with what I have, I'm going to cut this out. So let me just do this with a black pen so that you know what I'm cutting. So it's going straight up like this. And then from the crotch area now, it's going to be curved towards the hip area like this. Okay, because that is the style that I am going for. Like I said, you can do any pattern of your choice. So now I'm going to be cutting out this pattern. Okay. So this is what I have now. So I'm going to be cutting this on my trouser pattern. I'll cut this out on my trouser pattern. And then for cutting the two inches width of that black strip so from here now i'm just going to be measuring sorry two and i'm just going to continue measuring the two and a half inches and then after cutting my actual pattern i'm going to place this on another plain fabric and then cut that two and a half inches so you can see what i'm doing i'm just maintaining that two and a half inches mark and then i'll connect this I hope you get what I'm doing. So you can actually trace this one out on another pattern, or you can just cut this on your fabric and then later use this to cut it also. You don't need to trace it out, it's not compression. So now I'm using the cross side now to connect the coffee part so that it's not going to be too straight. So this is what I have. So you see this curved part now. It's going to be that black strip. So the first one is to cut this using my fabric like this. Then after cutting this, I'll cut out this part. So I've gone ahead to cut this on my fabric now. You can see the pattern that I have there. I just cut this following that shape that I have all the way to the end line. I remember this paper is not up to 45 inches. So I added the extra inches that I need to make for 45. So now that I've cut this now, I'm going to cut off this pattern for the black panel. So now you can actually cut this differently, but I just want to place the black on my on that pink fabric. So that was why I cut it together first before cutting the black. Okay. So you can see this black shape that I'm cutting out. So what I was explaining is that you can actually cut the pink separately and the black separately and then you sew it together. But I just want to cut the black in a way that I'm just going to place it on that pink and sew. Because that is what you want to do. You can cut your pink like this, cut your back like this and then add some allowance and then join them together. So now I'll place this on my black fabric now and cut it out. Okay, so now I've gone ahead to cut this now on another pattern. That's the black, and you can see I added the same allowance on both sides. So now I'll go over now and sew this on top of this all the way to the hem. But like I was saying, you can decide to just cut this pink like this. I think it will be easier that way that you sew them separately to each other. Whichever one is fine. So I'll just sew this now and then bring it back for us to continue. Okay, so now to sew this. This is the back panel, and then I already joined it together on the crotch. I used the contrasting thread that you see, so that you see what I did, and I just by just quarter of an inch. And then I had to, I had to take my dad. Remember, we added that allowance to it. So this is what the back is looking like, and then this is the front also. I also joined the front on the crotch. So you are seeing this journey here because my fabric was not enough, so I had to join it. But if you are doing yours, please don't do join join like what I'm doing. I'm just doing this for the purpose of a tutorial. So I'm just going to trim off the excess. I have 
spotted cutting it before I realized the fabric would not be enough. So now this is the front also. I took my dart. But remember for the design in front, we've already removed the dart. Because like I said, I just want it to be seamless. I don't want too much seam there. So I don't want it to have a crotch joining here and also I don't want it to have any that. That was why I joined the crotch before doing the design. So now I've gone ahead to sew the black on it like this and then here if I have enough, you can see the extra allowance that I have If I have enough, uh, there is no power presently but how I would like to finish this will be with the use of this um, Emin gum. You can see that even here, I made sure that my seam is not showing. You can see how seamless it is also. So I just place this. Let me remove the paper so that I can see how I sew it. So I just place it on it like this, then and I stitch this. See the stitch line. So I just stitch this here, then I folded it so that I'll not be having any seam line. Then on this side here, this extra allowance that I have, I just I'm just going to remove my Emin gum now and then place it here. And then fold it over it and then i'm going to iron it so that it's going to hold it for me because i don't want anything here but that's by the way so when you are doing the boy you are not going to be doing anything here so here you just fold it over now and then you top stitch on it to finish it off so now that i've done this the next thing is to place this on my front pattern and like i said you can see that it just fits the front pattern well so this is what I have and as you can see there is no seam line at this point here. So now the next thing to do is to sew this on your before you join the front to the back so that it will be easy for you. You can decide to leave this hanging for it to be hanging or you just sew it on your front pattern. But I think I'll be sewing this. So the first one to do now is to hold it on my side. So, so like I was saying now on this side front. I'm going to go over to hold it together with this stitch. It's not compulsory, but I just want it to be easier for me. I want this work to be easier for me. So now I'll go over to show you. But this center part also, you can actually hold this with the stitch or you just leave it to fly around if it's what you want. But I think I'll just be holding this also with the stitch. Then after doing that now, I'll bring my front and back together and then I'm going to join it on the crotch and then join it on both sides. I'm sure we know how to join our trouser by now so after holding this together after i do the design together with the front part i'll just bring it join it on the crotch so after joining the crotch then i'll join it on the side and bring it back to show us because this video is already long okay so now this is our trousers you can see i've joined this on both sides and also on the crotch area so you just give it a good press so that you can have something neat and then you hem it here on the hem line and then had a band on the waistline though so the one here that i held with a pin with pins at the zipper allowance where i'll be adding my zipper because i prefer to hide my zipper at the side and just look at what we have here in the front you can see that we don't have any seam here because i made sure to close my front crotch seam before i daft i drafted this pattern and then i also closed the dart line also so that i'll not have any seam here. and you can see how beautiful and seamless this is looking and this is the design that we attach to it so I just went ahead to hold it together with a stitch, but you can just leave it to be free flowing as the case may be if that is what you want. But just look at this trousers, as you can see how beautiful this is looking and how flat our crotch is looking. You just need to watch the video very well and you notice that it is not too difficult. So this is what it looks like back. So you can see our back, these are the dust lines that we took and you can see the crotch on the back also and see how beautiful and neat this is looking. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you can see that our palazzo also is not too big. So it's just a normal free straight pants. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, let us know in the comment section. Like, comment and subscribe to our channel and I'll see you in the next one.